Welcome to the Bible study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who's here with us today and for those who will listen in on the archives as well. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, the current version that we're reading in our Bible study is the English Standard Version, and we will be completing the book of Proverbs this week, uh, reading from Proverbs 17 to 31. Before we get started with that, we're going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you every day that you continue to put breath in our lungs and you are the lifter of our heads and we are very grateful to you, Father God. You are a life giver and and you're a wonderful father who also gave us your word in your, in the Bible. We ask the Holy Spirit to come lead us, guide us, and direct us as we dig deep into our Father's word. And we take the time to, to read what your word says. Holy Spirit, open the eyes of our heart. Open the ears of our heart that we may be receptive to everything that we read and hear. And that whatever we are to grasp from this week's lesson, that we are clear channels for that and, and that we integrate it into our, our being and our walk with the Lord. And we thank you. We thank you for your guidance and your direction. And we thank you that you're always here with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. Father God, we love you, we worship you, we adore you. There is no one like you. And we give all our praise and honor to you. For you, get all the glory. Everything is to glorify you, and we love you so much. In the mighty name, the name above all names, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. Now we're going to get started right away because we do have a lot of ground to cover um, with the chapters that we're going to cover today. So we're going to get started with chapter 17 of Proverbs. Better is a dry morsel with, with quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. A servant who deals wisely with, will rule over a son who acts shamefully and will share the inheritance as one of the brothers. The crucible is for silver and the furnace is for gold, and the Lord tests hearts. An evildoer listens to wicked lips, and a liar gives ear to a mischievous tongue. Whoever mocks the poor insults his maker, he who is glad at calamity will not go unpunished. Grandchildren are the crown of the aged, and the glory of children is their father's. Fine speech is not becoming to a fool, still less is false speech to a prince. A bribe is like a magic stone in the eyes of the one who gives it where, wherever he turns, he prospers. Whoever covers an offense seeks love. But he who repeats a matter separates close friends. A rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. An evil man seeks only rebellion, and a cruel messenger will be sent against him. Let a man meet a she-bear robbed of her cubs rather than a fool in his folly. If anyone returns evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is like letting out water so quick before the quarrel breaks out. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both like an abomination to the Lord. Hmm. We see a lot of justifying wicked in our day today. Isn't that an interesting proverb right there? Why? A verse of the proverb anyway. Why should a fool have money in his hand to buy wisdom when he has no sense? A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Only, uh, I'm sorry, one who lacks sense gives a pledge and puts up security in the presence of his neighbor. Whoever loves transgression loves strife. He who makes his door high seeks destruction. A man of a crooked heart does not discover good, and one with a dishonest tongue falls into calamity. He who sires a fool gets himself sorrow, and the father of a fool has no joy. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. The wicked accepts a bribe in secret. 
to pervert the ways of justice, the discerning steps his taste toward wisdom, but the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to her who bore him. To impose a fine on a righteous man is not good, not to strike the noble for their uprightness. Whoever restrains his words has knowledge, and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding, even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. Proverbs 18. Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. When wickedness comes, contempt comes also, and with dishonor comes disgrace. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. It is not good to be partial to the wicked or to deprive the righteous of justice. A fool's lip, lips walk into a fight and his mouth invites a beating. A fool's mouth is his ruin and his lips are a snare to his soul. The words of a whisperer are like delicious morsels. They go down into the inner parts of the body. Whoever is slack in his work is a brother to him who destroys the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. The rich man's wealth is his strong city, and like a high wall in his imagination. Before destruction, a man's heart is haughty, but humility comes before dishonor. If one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. A man's spirit will endure sickness, but a crushed spirit who can, who can bear. An intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great. The one who states his case first seems right until the other comes and examines him. The lot puts an end to quarrels and decides between powerful contenders. A brother, a, a brother offended is more unyielding than a strong city, and, and quarreling is like the bars of a castle. From the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. Death and life are in the power of a tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. The poor use entreaties, but the rich answer roughly. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs 19. Better is a poor person who walks in his integrity than one who is crooked in speech and is a fool. Desire without knowledge is not good, and whoever makes haste, with his feet misses his way when a man's folly brings his way to ruin his heart rages against the lord wealth brings many new friends but a poor man is deserted by his friend a false witness will not go unpunished and he who breathes out lies will not escape many seek the favor of a generous man and everyone is a friend to a man who gives gifts all a poor man's brothers all, all a poor man's brothers hate him how much more do his friends go far from him he pursues them with words, but does not have them. Whoever gets sense loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will discover good. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will perish. It is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury, much less for a slave to rule over princes. Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. A king's wrath is like the growling of a lion, but his favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish son is ruined to his father, and a wife's quarreling is continual dripping of rain. House and wealth are inherited from fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Slothfulness passes into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. Whoever keeps the commandment keeps his life. He who despises his ways will die. Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. Discipline your son, for there is hope. Do not set your heart on putting him to death. A man of great wrath will pay the penalty for if you deliver him, you will only have to do it again. Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Many are the plans of the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. What is desired in a man is steadfast love, and a poor man is better than a liar. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and whoever has, has it rests satisfied, but will not be visited by harm. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish and will not even bring it back to his mouth. Strike a scoffer, and the simple will learn prudence. Reprove a man of understanding, and he will gain knowledge. 
he who does violence to his father and chases away his mother is a son who brings shame and reproach. Cease to hear instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. A worthless witness mocks at justice, and the mouth of the wicked devours iniquity. Condemnation is ready for scoffers and beating for the backs of fools. Proverbs 20. Wine is a mocker, strong drink, a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. The terror of a king is like the growling of a lion. Whoever provokes him to anger forfeits his life. It is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife, but every fool will be quarreling. The sluggard does not plow in the autumn. He will seek at harvest and have nothing. The purpose in a man's heart is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Many a man proclaims his own steadfast love, but a faithful man who can find it. The righteous who walks in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. A king who sits on the throne of judgment winnows all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart pure, I am clean from my sin. Unequal weights and unequal measures are both alike an abomination to the Lord. Even a child makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is pure and upright. The hearing ear and the seeing eye the lord has made them both love not sleep lest you come to poverty open your eyes and you will have plenty of bread bad bad says the buyer but when he goes away then he boasts there is gold and abundance of costly stones but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel take a man's garment when he has put up security for a stranger and hold it in in pledge when he puts up security for foreigners Bread gained by deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be full of gravel. Plans are established by counsel, by wise guidance, wage, wage war. Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, therefore do not associate with a simple babbler. If one curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in utter darkness. An inheritance came hastily in the beginning will not be blessed in the end. Do not say, I will repay evil. Wait for the Lord, and he will deliver you. An equal weights are an abomination to the Lord, and false scales are not good. A man's steps are far from the Lord. Uh, are, I'm sorry, are from the Lord. A man's steps are from the Lord. How then can man understand his way? It is a snare to say rashly, it is holy, and to reflect only after making vows. A wise king winnows the wicked and drives the wheel over them. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all his innermost parts. Steadfast love and faithfulness preserve the king, and by steadfast love his throne is upheld. The glory of young men is their, is their strength, but the splendor of old men is their gray hair. The lows that, that wound cleanse away evil strokes make clean the innermost parts. The king's, okay, this is, Proverbs 21, the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked, are sin. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. Beginning of treasures by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and a snare of death. The violence of the wicked will sweep them away because they refuse to do what is just. The way of the guilty is crooked, but the conduct of the pure is upright. It is better to live in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. The soul of the wicked desire evil. His neighbor finds no mercy in his eyes. When a scoffer is punished, the simple become wise. When a wise man is instructed, he gains knowledge. The righteous one observes the house of the wicked, and he throws the wicked down to ruin. Whoever closes his ear to the cry of the poor will himself call out and not be answered. A gift in secret averts anger, and a concealed bribe strong, bribe strong wrath. And when justice is done, it is a joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers. One who wanders from the way of good sense will rest in the assembly of the dead. Whoever loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. The wicked is a ransom for the righteous and the traitor for the upright. It is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. Precious treasure and oil are in a wise man's dwelling, but a foolish man devours it. Whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness and honor, 
A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the stronghold in which they trust. Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. Scoffer is the name of the arrogant, haughty man who acts with arrogant pride. The desire of the sluggard kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. All day long he prays and prays, but the righteous gives and does not hold back. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination, but but much more, how much more, I'm sorry, when he brings it with evil intent. False witness will perish, but the word of a man who hears will endure. A wicked man puts on a bold face, but the upright gives thought to his ways. No wisdom, no understanding, no counsel. Can avail against the Lord. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. Proverbs 22, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor man, I'm sorry, sorry, the rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. I'm getting tongue-tied tonight. Sorry about that, guys. Um, the prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honors and honor and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the crooked. Whoever guards his soul will keep far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now that's one we've heard often. The rich rules over the poor and and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of his fury will, will fail. Whoever has a bountiful eye will be blessed, for he shares his bread with the poor. Drive out a scoffer, and strive, and strife will go out, and quarreling and abuse will cease. He who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious will have, will have the king as his friend. The eyes of the Lord Keep watch over knowledge, but he overthrows the word of the tra traitor. The sluggard says there is a lion outside. I shall be killed in the streets. The mouth of forbidden women is a deep pit. Be with it. He, he with whom the Lord is angry will fall into it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. Whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth, or gives to the rich, will only come to poverty. Words of the wise. Incline your ear and hear the words of the wise, and apply your heart to my knowledge, for it will be pleasant if you keep them within you, if all of them are ready on your lips, that you trust, that your trust may be in the Lord. I have made them known to you today, even to you. Have I not written for you 30 sayings of counsel and knowledge to make you know what is right and true? that you may give a true answer to those who sent you. Do not rob the poor because he is poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate, for the Lord will plead their cause and rob of life those who rob them. Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. Be not one of those who give pledges, who put up security for debts. If you have nothing with which to pay, why should your bed be taken from under you? Do not move the ancient landmark that your fathers have set. Do you see a man skillful in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Proverbs 23, when you sit down to eat with a ruler, observe carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat. If you are given to appetite, do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Do not toil to acquire wealth. Be discerning enough to desist. When your eyes light on it, it is gone, for suddenly it sprouts wings, flying like an eagle towards heaven. Do not eat the bread of a man who is stingy. Do not desire his delicacies, for he is like one who is inwardly calculating. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the morsels that you have eaten and waste your pleasant words. Do not speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the good sense of your words. Do not move an ancient landmark or enter the fields of the, of the fatherless, for the Redeemer is strong. He will plead their cause against you. Apply your heart to instruction and your ear to words of knowledge. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you strike him with a rod, he will not die. If you strike him with a rod, you will save his soul from Sheol. My son, if your heart is wise, my heart too will be glad. My inmost being will exalt when your lips speak 
what is right. Let not your heart envy sinners, but continue in the fear of the Lord all the day. Surely there is a future, and, and your hope will not be cut off. Hear, my son, and be wise, and direct your heart in the way. Be not among drunkards or among gluttonous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the gluttons will come to poverty, and slumber will clothe them with rags. Listen to your father who gave, your, gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy truth, and do not sell it. By wisdom, instruction, and understanding, the father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. He who fathers a wise son will be glad in him. Let your father and mother be glad. Let her who bore you rejoice. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. For a prostitute is a deep pit. An adulteress is a narrow well. She lies in wait like a robber and increases the traitors among mankind. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaining? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Those who tarry long over wine, those who go to try mixed wine, do not look at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the, in the cup and goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. Your eyes will see strange things and your heart utter perverse things. You will be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea, like one who lies on the top of the mast. They struck me, you will say, but I was not hurt. They bear me, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake? I must have another drink. Proverbs 24, be not envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them, for their hearts devise violence and their lips talk of trouble. By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge their rings are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is full of strength, and a man of knowledge enhances his might. For by wise guidance you can wage your war, and in abundance of counselors there is victory. Wisdom is too high for a fool in the gate. He does not open his mouth. Whoever plans to do evil will be called a, a schemer. The devising of folly is sin, and the scoffer is an abomination to mankind. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, Behold, we did not know this. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it and will he not repay man according to his work. My son, eat honey, for it is good, and the drippings of the honeycomb are sweet to your taste. Know that wisdom is such to your soul. If you find it, there will be a future, and your hope will not be cut off. Lie not in wait as a wicked man against the dwelling of the righteous. Do no violence to his home. For the righteous falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls. Let not your heart be glad when he stumbles, lest the Lord see it and be displeased and turn away from his anger, turn away his anger from him. Fret not yourself because of evildoers, and be not envious of the wicked, for the evil man has no future. The lamp of the wicked will be put out. My son, fear the Lord and the king, and do not join with those who do otherwise, for disaster will arise suddenly from them, and who knows the ruin that will come from them both. More sayings of the wise. These also are sayings of the wise. Partiality in judging is not good. Whoever says to the wicked, you are in the right, will be cursed by peoples, abhorred by nations. But those who rebuke the wicked will have delight. And a good blessing will come upon them. Whoever gives an honest answer kisses the lips. Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field. And after that, build your house. Be not a witness against your neighbor without cause. And do not deceive with your lips. Do not say, I will do to him as he has done to me. I will pay the man back for what he has done. I pass by the field of a sluggard, by the vineyard of a man lacking sense. And behold, it was all overgrown with thorns. The ground was covered with nettles, and its stone wall was broken down. Then I saw and considered it. I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. Chapter, I'm sorry, Proverbs 25, or chapter 25, more Proverbs of Solomon. These are these also are Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out, as the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. 
take away the dross from the silver. And the smith has material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen, do not hastily bring into the court for what you will do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame. Argue your case with your neighbor himself and do not reveal another secret, lest he who hears you bring shame upon you and your ill repute have no end. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver, like a gold ring or an ornament of gold. It is wise. It is a wise reprover to, to a listening ear. Like the cold of snow in the time of harvest, it is, it is a faithful messenger to those who send him. He refreshes the soul of his masters. Like clouds and wind without rain, as a man who boasts of a gift, he does not give. With patience, a ruler may be persuaded, and a soft tongue will break a bone. If you have found honey, eat only enough for you, lest you have your fill of it and vomit it. Lest, let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's house, lest he have his fill of you and hate you. A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a war club or a sword or a sharp arrow. arrow. Trusting in a treacherous man in, in time of trouble, is like a bad tooth or a foot that slips. Whoever sings songs to a heavy heart is like one who takes off a garment on a cold day and like vinegar on soda. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he is thirsty, give him water to drink, for you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. The north wind brings forth rain and a backbiting tongue angry looks. It is better to live in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. Like cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Like a muddled spring or a polluted fountain is a righteous man who gives way before the wicked. It is not good to eat much honey, nor is it glorious to see one's own glory. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Proverbs 26, like snow in summer or rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a sparrow in its, in its flitting, like a swallow in its flying, a curse that is causeless does not alight. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, a rod for the back of fools. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. Whoever sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off his own feet and drinks violence. Like a lame man's legs, which hang useless, is a proverb in the mouth of fools. Like one who binds a stone in the sling is one who gives honor to a fool. Like a thorn that goes up into the hand of a drunkard is a proverb in the mouth of fools. Like an archer who wounds everyone is one who hires a passing fool or drunkard. Like a dog that returns to his vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. Do you see a man who is wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. The slugger says there is a lion in the road. There is a lion in the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so does the, a sluggard on his bed. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish. It wears him out to bring it back to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. Whoever meddles in a quarrel, not his own, is like one who takes a passing dog by the ears. Like a madman who throws fire, firebrands, arrows, and death is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, I'm only joking. Uh, for lack of wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no whisper, quarreling ceases. As charcoal to hot embers and wood to fire, so is quarrelsome man for kindling strife. The words of a whisperer are like delicious morsels. They go down into the inner parts of the body. Like the glaze covering an earthen vessel are fervent lips with an evil heart. Whoever hates dis hate, whoever hate disguises himself with his lips and harbors deceit in his heart. When he speaks graciously, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred be covered with deception, his wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and a stone will come back on him who starts it rolling. A lying tongue hates its victims, and 
a flattering mouth works ruin. And then we go to Proverbs 27. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let another praise, praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. A stone is heavy and, and sand is weighty, but a fool's provocation is heavier than both. Wrath is cruel. Anger is overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, profuse are the kisses of an enemy. One who is full, one who is full loathes honey, but to one who is hungry, everything bitter is sweet. Like a bird that strays from its nest is a man who strays from his home. Oil and perfume make the heart glad, and the sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. Do not forsake your friend and your father's friend, and do not go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor who is near than a brother who is far. Be wise, my son, and make my heart glad, that I may answer him who reproaches me. The prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. Take a man's garment when he has put up security for a stranger, and hold him in pledge when he puts up security for an adulteress. Whoever blesses his neighbor with a loud voice rising early in the morning will be counted as a person. A continual dripping on a rainy day and a quarrelsome wife are alike. To restrain her is to restrain the wind or to grasp oil in one's right hand. Iron sharpens iron and one, one man sharpens another. Whoever tends a fig tree will eat its fruit and he who guards his master will be honored. As in water, as in water face reflects face, so the heart of a man reflects the man. Sheol and Abaddon are never satisfied, and never satisfied are the eyes of a man. The crucible is for silver, and the furnace is for gold, and a man is tested by his praise. Crush a fool in, in a mortar with a pestle, along with crushed grain, yet his folly will not depart from him. Know well the condition of your flocks, and give attention to your herds. For riches do not last forever, and does a crown endure to all generations? When the grass is gone and the new growth appears and the vegetation of the mountains is gathered, the lambs will provide your clothing and the goats the price of a field. There will be enough goats milk for your food, for the food of your household and the maintenance for your girls. Proverbs 28. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. When a land transgresses, transgresses it has many rulers, but with a man of understanding and knowledge, its stability will long continue. A poor man who oppresses the poor is a beating rain that leaves no food. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked, but those who keep the law strive against them. Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand it completely. Better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than a rich man who is crooked in his ways. The one who keeps the law is a son with understanding, but a companion of gluttons shames his father. Whoever multiplies his wealth by by interest and profit, gathers it for him who is gen generous to the poor. If one turns away from turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Whoever misleads the upright into an evil way will fall into his own pit, but the blameless will have a goodly inheritance. A rich man is wise in his own eyes, but a poor man who has understanding will find him out. When the righteous triumph, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, people hide themselves. Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Blessed is the one who fears the Lord always, but whoever hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Like a roaring lion or a charging bear is a wicked ruler over a poor people. A ruler who lacks understanding is a cruel oppressor, but he who hates unjust gain will prolong his days if one is burdened with the blood of another. He will be a fugitive until death. Let no one help him. Whoever walks in integrity will be delivered, but he who is crooked in his ways will suddenly fall. Whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits will have plenty of poverty. A faithful man will abound with blessings, but whoever hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. To show partiality is not good, but for a piece of bread, a man will do wrong. A stingy man hastens after wealth and does not know that poverty will come upon him. Whoever rebukes a man will afterwards find more favor than he who flatters with his tongue. Whoever robs his father or his mother and says, 
that is no transgression. It's a companion to a man who destroys. A greedy man stirs up strife, but the one who trusts in the Lord will be enriched. Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. Whoever gives to the poor will not want, but he who hides his eyes will get many a curse. When the wicked rise, people hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. Proverbs 29. He who is often reproved, yet stiffens his neck, will suddenly be broken beyond healing. When the righteous increase, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule, the people groan. We've heard that numerous, numerous times. Um, and that is, there is truth to that. If we have righteous leaders, then, then nations, then the nation with righteous leaders can rejoice. But when the wicked are ruling, then people are not happy. He who loves wisdom makes his father glad, but a companion of prostitutes squanders as well. By justice, the king builds up the land, but he who exacts gifts tears it down. A man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. An evil man is ensnared in his transgression, but a righteous man sings and rejoices. A righteous man knows the rights of the poor. A wicked man does not understand such knowledge. Stoppers that a city of flame, but the wise man turns away wrath. If a wise man has an argument with a fool, the fool only rages and laughs, and there is no quiet. Bloodthirsty men hate one who is blameless and seek the life of the upright. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. If a ruler listens to falsehood, all his officials will be wicked. The poor man and the oppressor meet together. The Lord gives light to the eyes of both. If a king faithfully judges the poor, his throne will be established forever. The rod of reproof gives wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. When the wicked increase, transgression increases, but the righteous will look upon their downfall. Discipline your son, and he will give you rest. He will give delight to your heart. When there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. By mere words, a servant is not disciplined, for though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Whoever pampers his servant from childhood will, will in the end find him his heir. A man of wrath stirs up strife, and one given to anger causes much transgression. One's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. Partner of a thief hates his own life, he hears the curse but discloses nothing. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Many seek the face of a ruler, but it is from the Lord that it that a man gets justice. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, but one whose way is straight is an abomination to the wicked. Proverbs thirty, the words of Agur, and that's A G U R, the words of Agur, son of Jacob, the oracle. The man declares, I am weary, O oh God, I am weary, O oh God, and worn out. Surely I am too stupid to be a man. I have not I have not the understanding of a man. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the Holy One, who has ascended to heaven and come down, who has gathered the wind in his fist, who has wrapped up the waters in a garment, who has established all the ends of the earth. What is his name, and what is his son's name? Surely you know. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Two things I ask of you, deny them not to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Do not slander a servant to his master, lest he curse you and you be held guilty. There are those who curse their fathers and do not bless their mother, mothers. There are those who are clean in their own eyes but are not washed of their filth. There are those, how lofty are their eyes, how high their eyelids lift. There are those whose teeth are swords, whose fangs are knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, the needy from among mankind. Leech has two daughters, give and give, 
three things are never satisfied four never say enough she old the barren woman I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry she old the barren womb the land never satisfied with water and the fire that never says enough the eye that mocks a father and scorns to obey a mother will be picked out by the ravens of the valley and eaten by the vultures three things are too wonderful for me four i do not understand the way of an eagle in the sky the way of a serpent on a rock the way of a ship on the high seas seas and the way of a man with a virgin this is the way of an adulteress she eats and wipes her mouth and says i have done no wrong under three things when the earth trembles under four it cannot bear up a slave when he becomes king and a fool when he is filled with food an unloved woman when she when she gets a husband and a maid servant when she displaces her mistress four things on earth are small but they are exceedingly wise the ants are a people not strong yet they provide their food in the summer the rock badgers are a people not mighty yet they make their homes in the cliffs the locusts have no king yet all of them march and rank the lizards you can take in your hands yet it is in king, king's palaces three things are stately in their tread four are stately in their stride the lion which is mightiest among beasts and does not turn back before anything the strutting rooster the he-goat and a king whose army is with him if you have been foolish exalting yourself or if you have been devising evil put your hand on your mouth for pressing milk produces curds pressing the nose produces blood and pressing anger produces strife proverbs 31 the words of king lemuel the words of king lemuel an oracle that his mother taught him what are you doing my son what are you doing son of my womb what are you doing son of my vows do not give your strength to women your ways to those who destroy kings it is not for for kings o lemuel it is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to those in bitter distress let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more open your mouth for the mute for the rights of all who are destitute open your mouth judge righteously defend the rights of the poor and needy the woman who fears the lord an excellent wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels the heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain she does him good and not harm all the days of her life she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands she is like the ships of the merchant she brings her food from afar she rises while it is yet at, yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens she considers the field and buys it with the fruit of her hands she plants a vineyard she dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong she perceives that her merchandise is profitable her lamp does not go out at night she puts her hand to the to the distaff and her hand hands hold the spindle she opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy she is not afraid of snow for her household for all her household are clothed in scarlet she makes bed coverings for herself her clothing is fine linen and purple her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land she makes linen garments and sells them she delivers sashes to the merchant strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness her children rise up and call her blessed her husband also and he praises her many women have done excellently but you you surpass them all charm is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman who fears the lord is to be praised give her of the fruit of her hands and let her work praise her works praise her in the gate and that is the end of the book of proverbs and we've actually just completed three of the five books of the books of poetry so we have ecclesiastes left and the song of solomon and sometimes that's known as the song of songs so we're going to do a recap of what we just read and um before we do that i just want to mention um the writers of of proverbs um 
so we know Proverbs 1 to 29 was written by Solomon. And then Proverbs 30 was Agur, A-G-U-R, and he was a wise man. And Lemuel was a king or an Arabian prince, and he wrote Proverbs 31. So we know that uh, Proverbs 1 to 24 was written and compiled by Solomon, and 25 to 29 compiled by the men of Hezekiah. So to recap, so just as a reminder, what when we recap last week, um, the book of Proverbs, as well as the next two books, Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon, is thought to have been written by King Solomon somewhere around 950 BC. And the book of the theme of the book of, of Proverbs is the wisdom of God or universal pr principles for living. So it Proverbs is is a book of sayings that are intended to guide people in wise and right living by the repetition of wise thoughts. And we could hear the repetition, things that were repeated um, several times, actually, in, in different Proverbs. Proverbs sets out what is right and what is wrong, and the book is not a slick formula for success because wisdom in Proverbs is based on reverence for God and obedience of his laws. Solomon was the son of David and Bathsheba, we know that uh, also, um, without a doubt, he was influenced by, by King David and his, who was the, the sweet psalmist of Israel. Solomon left us more Old Testament books than any other writer except for Moses. You know, and we know a proverb is, is a statement and a fact. You know, it's a brief saying instead of using many words. It's a short statement that draws uh, from a long experience, and it's a book of practical wisdom. So um, we know very little about Agur and King Lemuel and the other writers of Proverbs. By their names, um, they were not Israelites. We know that King Hezekiah was one of the editors or compilers of Proverbs, and the book of Proverbs is a compilation or collection of sayings. The writings were spread over a period of years, with the main work probably centered around 950 B.C. And under the leadership of King Solomon, Israel experienced its great geographical extent as well as the least violence of the kingdom period. Solomon's reign was peaceful along with wisdom. Peace brought great prosperity to Solomon's kingdom so that so much so that the Queen of Sheba even visited him. Um, again, Proverbs applies the principles of God's teaching to the whole of life, to relationships, home work, justice, decisions, and attitudes, reactions, as well as everything that we do, say, and think. God has taught us what is best for us. Experience proves it. The wisdom found in the book of Proverbs is as meaningful today as it was when it was first written. And the reader needs to keep in mind, however, that Proverbs is not a prosperity pamphlet or a handbook on how to succeed in the world. This book teaches us how to order our lives and how to develop character. You know, and it is relevant today, and many readers choose to read a chapter a day in their daily meditation. Um, they use the book of Proverbs for meditation. Proverbs creates a powerful appetite in the readers to develop a lifestyle that can only be satisfied by Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. So, so we see Proverbs 1 to 9 addresses wisdom and folly. Proverbs 10 to 24 are Solomon's Proverbs written and compiled by Solomon. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I had said 1 to 24 before it's 10 to 24 and proverbs 25 to 29 are proverbs of solomon compiled by men of hezekiah and then we have the words of a girl uh, in proverbs 30 and proverbs 31 the words of a mother and we know also it was written by king lemuel in the book of proverbs we find short repeat or backup statements and and the writing is called parallelism and there are three types, and we started addressing that last week. Synonymous parallelism is where the second clause restates what is given in the first clause. And we found, found that in Proverbs 19, verse 29. Judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the backs of fools. 
and contrast parallelism is in this situation the truth is stated in the first clause and is made stronger in the second clause by contrast with an opposite truth so that was in psalm 13 last week the light of the righteous rejoice but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out so the contrast between righteous and wicked synthetic or completive parallelism is when the second clause develops the thought of the first again proverbs 20 verse 2 the fear of a king is as the roaring lion who so provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul and spiritual value that there, there are spiritual values in in the book of proverbs we believe the Ruach HaKadosh inspired the Proverbs and placed them in the scripture canon. And the true spiritual value comes in reading Proverbs and comparing them to modern man's ways of thinking, which are not always good. Men say a lot of things and, that make no sense. And uh, for example, you know, some of the, some of the things, the best things in life are free. Well, not all things are, are best. Um, but yeah, you don't have to pay money for them. So that's a good thing. I mean, there's different ways that you can look at it, but, uh, really, I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> look before you leap. The Proverbs provides us with truthful sayings and truthful thinking. And, and one of the, the most notable, um, Proverbs is Proverbs three verses five to six. And it's very powerful. Uh, it's, it's a proverb, you know, it's a very powerful one or truth to apply to all of our lives. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not in, unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And that is the end of our Bible study for this week. And um, we're going to close with prayer and then do our altar call and then close out the, the entire session. Father God, we thank you for this powerful book of Proverbs that is a treasure in, in the Bible. There's, there's many sayings in there. There's many things that we can continue to learn from Proverbs each time we read it. And yes, um, one, of the most, one of the most outstanding for verses um, of the Bible is, is trusting in you and not on our own understanding. Your ways are higher than ours, and we, we know that. So you see everything. Where our vision is just finite, we just see, you know, a small portion of a big picture, but you see the entire picture. So to be wise is to 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 reach out to you, to, to bring everything to you, because you know everything. You know everything before it even happens. Nothing surprises you, Lord. You're just so amazing and awesome. So it is the wise thing to come to the one who knows, and that's you. And you're our Abba Father. We love you so much. And you mean your, your plans for us are not for harm, but they are for good. You have our best interest at heart. You're a loving, merciful Father. We love you. We give you all of our praise, all of our honor, and we're blessed to be in your presence, and we give you glory. All the glory goes to you. It is for your glory. Thank you so much, Father God, for everything that you have done, everything you're doing, and everything that you will do. We pray this prayer in the name above all names, the name, the most powerful name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. And that brings us to our altar call. If you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, his Hebrew name is Yeshua, and it means salvation. And salvation can only be achieved through, through him. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. You can't save yourself. doesn't matter what you think you can do, but that is not possible. You're not your own God. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences, and the consequences of sin is death and separation from our Creator. 
our Lord took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and we could finally once and for all be reconciled to the Father. Prior to Yeshua coming and giving his life, there were animal sacrifices that covered sin. It only covered sin. Remember, the wages of sin is death. God allowed, God loved humanity, loves humanity so much that he allowed for a substitute. That substitute was, had to be perfect, blemish free, uh, perfect animals that uh, the remission for sin was blood, the blood of these animals, but it only covered the sin. And there was a multitude of sacrifices that went on year after year after year for all of the people. So Yeshua actually was the final sacrifice. He was the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. Everything got heaped onto Yeshua on the cross. Every sin imaginable to mankind, anything, everything, was nailed on the cross with him. So when the world tells you there's many, many paths to get to heaven, um, that's a bold-faced lie. We don't get to heaven on, on our works. You know, it is through faith. And actually, I'm going to take you to um, Ephesians, just to take you to Ephesians chapter 2 of Ephesians, um, starting with verse 8, for by grace... You have been saved through faith. Now, these are uh, those of us who have already been born again and saved. And I'm, I'm speaking also to those who are going to come to the Lord and be saved today. Um, this is how you get saved, by grace through faith. And it is not from yourselves. It is a the gift of God. And that gift was Yeshua. Paying our sin debt in full. We did not do it. There's nothing that we, we would be able to do for ourselves. It is not based on deeds so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Messiah Yeshua for good deeds, which God prepared beforehand so we might walk in them. Jesus paid it all for us. He paid our sin debt in full. And he is the only one that could do that because... We were born into a sinful, fleshly body, all because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Okay. When mankind was created, at that point, there had been no sin on the earth okay, by mankind. Um, and God gave mankind dominion and authority over everything on the earth. However, when they disobeyed God and took from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that was the sin. Now, prior to that, they were covered by God's glory. And, you know, they had a wonderful relationship with God. He would meet with them every day and talk, walk and talk with them and they lost all of that and they got kicked out of the garden of eden because um they were disobedient and they got tricked into thinking that god was withholding something from them and he really wasn't i mean humanity was made in god's image so they already were like god in that respect and and well of course the evil one uh, disguised himself as a serpent and enticed Eve, Eve um, and she actually looked at the tree. And then, then, then the words that he gave her, you know, she she started thinking that you know, God was with, withholding something from them. And so did so did Adam. Adam actually went along with it. God had actually gave the command commandment to Adam about the tree of of the knowledge of good and evil. But he, so he could have stopped Eve at any time and said, "No, we're not doing this. This is this is what God said, and we're not we're not taken from that." But he went along with it, so uh, he willingly sinned. Um, so they so they were both they were both um, 
guilty of sin. But interestingly enough, uh, he blamed the serpent uh, and Adam blamed Eve. <laughs> that woman you gave me made me do this. Well, no, she didn't. I mean, you had a mind of your own. You know, so, I mean, she chose to, to be fooled by the serpent, but Adam could have stopped at any time and said, no, I'm not doing it. And if you do it, <laughs> there's consequences for that, but I'm not doing it. And he knew better. You know, this is why we need to think for ourselves. You know, it's not always good to follow the crowd, you know, so to speak, or to, you know, but we, we have, God gives us each free will to choose. And the choice was made and they disobeyed God. So, and that there was a consequence to that, and um, they were the glory covering that God, you know, that that was from God that was upon them was gone because sin cannot stand before a holy God, and they had sinned. So now they were given with this; they were they were they actually died a spiritual death, and now they were stuck with this fleshly body that was going to die and return to dust. And they lost dominion and authority over the earth, too. That was forfeited. So the first Adam blew it. And so Jesus is known as the last Adam as well, also known as the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, also known as Son of God, Son of Man. Now, he came and, and identified as Son of Man for a reason. Adam, mankind, the human, Adam messed it all up. So Jesus came as a human, the son of man, as a man to reverse the curse because, and he had to be the, the only one that could reverse the curse had to be spotless, blameless, sinless, and continue to walk a perfect life. Well, no human being other than Jesus who came in divinity, he was born of a virgin, the Ruach, Hakadash, the, the Holy Spirit of God breathed life into her, and he wasn't born through the Adamic, the line of Adam. That was the only way. And because he was perfect and sinless, he could take on, he became our substitute. He never sinned, but he took everybody, whoever live before him during his time and anyone that will ever live on the earth. He took everybody's sins on so that we, all humanity could be redeemed. And imagine all the different types of sins that he took on. Everything imaginable, every abomination. So he loved us that much that he gave his very life for us. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Yeshua died for us, and that is Romans chapter 5 verse 8. The Lord took all the sins of the world with him, everything, Everything was nailed to the cross with him. When he laid down his life on the cross, he died a horrific death so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and we could be reconciled to the Father. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but will have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. You cannot save yourself. You were born into a sin, sinful, you were born into the sinful flesh. But Jesus said you must be born again, born of spirit and water. And it's through him and him alone. And yes, the world will tell you there's many paths that you can get to heaven. You could, you know, and, and there are some denominations that tell you, you must tithe to the church and that's how you get to heaven. Or, you know, you can, you know, you can tithe if you, for your loved one. And now you can't tithe for your loved one to undo anything they have done. You know, everybody has an individual choice and free will that God gives us. 
but it is between you and God whether you choose wisely or not. You know, we can we can lead you, but we can't make you, and, and God's not going to force himself on you. You know, he wants you to, to want his righteousness and want him to be part of him because you want to, because you love him. And Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. He loves He loves all of us. He died for each and every one of us without exception. And it doesn't matter how far you have fallen. He will forgive you. And I, that's not to say that if you've done something horrific in this lifetime that there isn't consequences, you know. But that's not to say that you need to carry those consequences with you to eternity. You can be saved and redeemed. You can be with the Lord in eternity. But that's up to you. But Jesus did not die in vain. So don't think that you can get there on your own merit. You can't buy your way to heaven. Uh, your money, you know, when you leave this earthly existence, your money means nothing. It's done. It's over. It's, it's just meant for this physical realm because you can't spend it in heaven. And if you're not going to make it to heaven and go to hell, you can't spend it there either. It's worthless in eternity. Yes, we do need it to survive in this world. We know that. But, you know, it's not, you know, it's not the be all. And people, people actually worship their, their money and they worship, you know, they worship themselves. They, they have all kinds of, of things that they, they, they worship and it, and, and avoiding worshiping of God. But, you know, all that is useless when you leave this earth. However, and you won't live forever in this fleshly temporary body. However, your spirit will go on forever. So choose wisely what you do. You're not your own God. There's people that think they're their own gods. And there's people that sadly have sold their souls to the devil himself. And he's a defeated foe. I mean, how silly is that? You know, for, for, for a few years in comparison to eternity for fame, fortune, for riches, for, for power, and, you know, all because of greed. You know, the devil himself got greedy when he let his pride get to him. Uh, and he was, he was created, you know, all the angels are created by God. Uh, everything was created by God, mind you. Um, but he was one of the angels. He wasn't, he was a, he was one of the big shot angels actually. Um, and he was given authority. He was, he was given a very important role and he guarded the throne of God. He was, he stood right beside God, decided who was coming before the throne. Also, he was the praise and worship leader. Also, he was made a very beautiful angel and he let everything go to his head. Uh, he got very conceited about who he was and, and craved power, uh, got prideful and decided that he was going to try to take over the throne of God, the very God that created him. Well, that was very foolish. And he, not, not to, not to mention he was foolish. A third of the angels, uh, decided to rebel with him. Well, he has no ability to create. He is, he is, he cannot be at all places at all times. He doesn't know everything. No, he's not God and he never would be. And he could never, never throw the kingdom of heaven and take over God's throne. Never. So what happened, his name was Lucifer. What happened is he was shoved out of heaven, him and the third of the angels, and they, they lost their heavenly estate. That's it. And he was flung down to earth. And we don't know how long he was there before humanity was created. And, and you know, when, when humanity was created and God gave dominion and authority over everything on the earth, that included them those that got thrust out of heaven. So he really, he hated God. And then now God goes and creates these, these little beings that are made in the image of him and who he hated right from the beginning. So he, 
he planned to mess up humanity. And he, you know, for those that are worshiping him, that is really foolish because he's he wants to take you down. He he doesn't care about you. You know, he he is a liar. He's a liar and his he's got a threefold ministry to kill, steal and destroy and he will destroy you if you allow him. But really he has no power. Um Jesus defeated him on the cross. So why would you even want to worship a defeated foe or serve a defeated foe? foe or sell your soul to a defeated foe i mean that is a losing battle right there jesus is victorious he was victorious he reversed the curse and dominion and authority was actually given back to to mankind but in jesus name not in the devil's name it was taken from him he ripped it and stripped it away from, from the devil. So, the only hope is in Jesus. He's the only Savior. He's the Savior of the world. He's the Messiah. He's the true Messiah. He was the Messiah. He is the Messiah. And he is the Messiah that will be coming, but he will be coming not as the suffering servant what he did the first time. The first time he had to do that in order to provide that pathway for redemption for each and every one of us, for humanity. When he comes, he is coming to rule and reign as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's coming as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's not going to become come as an innocent baby born. He's he's coming, full grown. And he's coming to rule and reign. Amen. Amen. The other thing that occurred before Jesus went to the cross is Roman soldiers beat him brutally. And one of the stripes that he took was actually for our, our illnesses and afflictions. And, and we, can, we can say by his stripes, we are healed. But he did a lot for us. He did everything for us, and we can't save ourselves. And you need to understand that. And if you're believing the fake reports of what the world is telling you, you're being led astray. And I would be remiss to tell you, other, you know, otherwise, it's a lie. It is a lie. But you can be saved. Doesn't matter how far you have fallen. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Call upon his name. Confess your sins. But be sincere about your repentance. That you want to turn away from it. You want to do better. He will help you. When you're born again and saved, you become a new creature, a new creation in him, in Jesus. Everything changes. Amen. Amen. So 1 John, again, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is the only one. I can't save you, but I can lead you to him who can. And he will forgive your sins, and he will remember them no more, as if they never happened. And you can be born again and saved. If you would like to be saved, born again, and become a child of God, part of the family of God, part of the part of the kingdom of heaven, you can say the simple prayer with me now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess to you that I am a sinner and I need a savior. I totally get that I can't save myself. And I know. Jesus, Yeshua is the only one who can. And I'm bringing it all to you right now, Jesus. And I'm asking you to forgive me of anything that I've ever done that is unholy to you. I thank you. I thank you wholeheartedly for paying my sin debt in full. 
doing for me what I could never do for myself. I can't save myself. I understand that. And you provided this ability for me to get saved and born again. And I accept. I accept the gift of salvation. I accept the gift of eternal life that you offer. I'm asking you to be Lord of my life. I want you to be Lord. Because you are the Lord. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I thank you. I thank you, Yeshua, for everything. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you were buried. I believe you rose again. And I believe you're coming to rule and reign again. And I thank you for everything that you have done for me and for everyone. And I thank you for forgiving me of sin. I thank you for for inviting me into the family of God and I wholeheartedly accept. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life. I believe through you and you alone, Jesus, that I'm saved, I'm healed, delivered and set free from sin and the consequences of sin. And I believe also through you and you alone, Jesus, that I am healed and now healthy of mind, body, and soul. In Jesus Christ, precious, powerful, mighty name, Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray this. Amen and amen. And if you've said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible. It does not mix and match ways of the world, because as you can see, the world will tell you all kinds of things, but they're not necessarily the truth, and very little that is out in the world is truthful. So that is just, unfortunately, the way it is. How do you know that you are getting sound doctrine, that you are getting the truth uh, from who you're listening to? Get a copy of the Bible. That will help you to to start learning the word of God, and you're actually learning the you know what what is on the heart of our heavenly Father. And yes, you have been born into the family of God, born again, not of the flesh, but of the spirit. And that is that is how we enter the kingdom of of heaven. As a child of God, and born again in the spirit, spirit, spirit of uh, you know because of what Yeshua did. And we accepted Yeshua as our Lord and Savior. So getting a copy of the Bible, reading it, <laughs> joining Bible studies is is, is really um, something that I advocate. Yes, you can continue to partake of hours online. But when you join your local congregation, most of them have Bible studies where you can get into, you know, groups of people where you can have active discussion. Join some small groups that have educational experiences too within your congregation. Develop a prayer life. Talk to God. He is your heavenly father now, whereby you can call him Abba, Father. You're born again into his family and he loves you. And the Bible is his instruction manual for us. And this is where you get to know the heart of him. So you want to read it. You want to know that you're getting sound doctrine. Don't just be like one of those that sit in, in, in churches and synagogues and they just listen, but they never open the Bible. How do you know what you're hearing is truth? Yeah, you might have heard it your whole life, but is it really true? You will only know... An, um, when you read the Bible yourself and discern one of the gifts of the, the Holy Spirit now you have the Holy Spirit now living inside of you one of the gifts the Holy Spirit gives is discerning of spirit there's a lot of false spirit out there fake spirits you know Jesus warned us when he was here and so did the disciples that there was there was false teachings going on there was there was false Jesuses and we know we you know, if you look in history, there was people that proclaimed to be Jesus and, well, <laughs> they came and they gone. And <laughs> now, I mean, they were not Jesus, of course, but they had followers, boy. 
uh, and they led a lot of people astray. And also, you know, there's a lot that there's a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing that are teaching wrong things. So be careful of the doctrine uh, that you listen to as well. So be discerning. It's okay. You might have to go through a couple, a couple, you know, congregations or churches till you find the one that is suitable and one that is being true to the word of God. That is the most important. Don't get all hung up with denominations and thinking that, oh, I have to join a Baptist church because my family were all Baptists and, you know, or, you know, my ancestors were this or, or, you know, I need to join Pentecostal or I need to join um, a Methodist church. I need to join a Catholic church. Don't get caught up in, in denominations. I'm going to just tell you, Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA, we are non-denominational. We are based on Ephesians chapter 2, Jew and Gentile and one body of Messiah. We are we are simply Messianic believers in, in Yeshua and Jesus who have been born again and saved and were part of the family of God. And we follow the Bible. In eternity, when we all get together, <laughs> in, in eternity, there's not going to be denominations that are going to separate us up in heaven. There's not going to be any of that. We're all redeemed, born again, saved, family of God, period. That's the end. You know, so, you know, in this world, we have so many divisions that, that separate people and it should not be. We are all human beings created by one creator, God, and we need to unite as humanity, as human beings. One of the things that my, I, I, I hope to see that I pray for is that, you know, the church unites. You know, there is so much division in the church, in the ecclesia itself. You know, and I see it a lot, you know, when you scroll just a little bit scrolling, I see brothers and sisters in 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 Yeshua in in Christ arguing right there in, in the open on, on social media that kind of stuff has to stop you know we have a huge harvest that needs to take place and you know people that might be sitting on the fence there they're seeing what you're doing and they're saying well I don't want any of that this is no different than what I've got here you know we've got something that that yes We've got something they don't have. We have salvation. We have Jesus. And we need to stop all the bickering among yourself. It is not helping anything. We need to be about the Father's business. Time is short. You know, we are all, if you're, if you're truly born again and saved, our great commission is ahead of us. And we were given this great commission to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone that we can. We can plant, we might be planting seeds at first, and, or, or we might be harvesting uh, the seeds that have been planted in the past, but we need to be about the Father's business. There are, there's, there's a, a lot of people that, that will perish, that we, they need to hear, they need to hear the truth, and maybe they haven't heard the truth in the right way, you know, maybe they were never really given the full truth. But they need to know the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then they have free will to choose which way they will go. But still, we need to be about the Father's business. And that's what we need to unite. And we need to unite against the evilness of this world. You know, how, can you, how can you battle against wickedness and evil when, you know, when the church can't even unite? A hundred percent. You know, we are considered the body of Messiah with, with Messiah being the head. Well, it, it looks like a real dysfunctional body when people are arguing and bickering. You know, in the physical body, if one system goes haywire, it does affect the rest of the body in some way, shape, or form. The body starts to compensate for that system that is not working well. And that's how God designed us. So, um, you know, he designed us magnificently and wonderfully that, you know, even when one system is going going haywire, 
you know, the other parts of the body can compensate and keep it, keep the body going. But sooner or later, you know, the physical body can get so broken down that it will not survive. So such as the spiritual body of the body of Christ. You know, if, if one part of the body is pulling down the rest, what's going to happen? It's going to become weak, anemic, not being able to function. So we need to think about that. And we need to look at, you know, what, what are you posting on social media and arguing with one another? You know, there are non-believers that scroll by and, you know, and say, oh, well, okay, these people are, <laughs> are, are not what I want to be part of. They fight with one another. I mean, really? I mean, is that what you want to be seen as? Is that how you're, you're going to be ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven? So I, I really encourage people that are doing this. I don't know who this is for, but I encourage you to stop. Think about what you do before you do it. You know, it's just like, you know, the power of the tongue is very powerful. You can actually harm people with, with words. And the same with the tight words. And I'm not talking about, you know, being politically correct, because I'm certainly not politically correct. I'm biblically correct. I'm talking about the body of Messiah working as a whole. And when you're bickering with, with your, you're, you're bickering with one another over, over silly things, that's not working together as a whole. And it gets, I've seen people get really downright ugly with one another. It's like, well, I, I, I'm, I would not engage in any of that. It's like, you know, I don't have time for that. We, I don't have time for that anyway, or even to rebuke you. I, I, I'm very busy in trying to, trying to get the word of God out to people because we have a big job to do. There's a huge harvest coming. And are you ready? Are you ready to help people that, that, that are looking, looking for answers? And the answer is Jesus. But are you ready to lead them to him? So let's get ready for that. Whoever that is meant for, I hope it blesses you. And I hope you really take it to heart and the Holy Spirit convicts you on this. And with that being said, I'm going to bring, uh, bring this to a close. We're going to bring it to a close with the ironic blessing on a pos very positive note. Um, and actually, this is biblical. It is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. Uh, this is known as the Aaronic blessing, the priestly blessing. The Lord spoke to Moses and told Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. He gave them specific words that they were to speak over the children of Israel. And, and also said, and they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. These specific words are blessing. They're, they were meant to bless the children of Israel. Okay. When you become a member of the family of God, okay, he writes his name on you, steals you with his Holy Spirit. So yes, this blessing is for you. And I'm going to say it first in Hebrew, and then I'm going to say it in English. And in Hebrew, it goes like this. Ivarekaka Adonai ve'ish mareka. Ya'er Adonai panavaleka bikuneka. Isa Adonai panavaleka ve'asemleka shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Amen and amen. Well, it's still early enough in the week to say Shavua Tov. God bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful week. Uh, welcome to the family of God. Those who, who have said that this prayer, uh, the prayer with me earlier. Um, and again, get into a Bible-based church messianic congregation. The word of God is your spiritual food, just like your physical body needs food to sustain, food and water to sustain itself. Your spiritual body needs food, and that is the word of God. And I wish you all well, and God bless each and every one of you. Next week, we will be doing the entire book of Ecclesiastes. Now, this was written, just, just to, to, to let you know ahead in advance, this was also written by Solomon in his older age. And as, you, as we're going to see, he, he has many regrets. Um, and um, 
We'll see that in Ecclesiastes. God bless.